We're going to start on Parliament Hill today, where a committee of MPs has tabled its report on House Speaker Greg Fergus. He's been under fire from Conservative and Bloc MPs since appearing in a video for the outgoing provincial Liberal leader filmed inside the Speaker's office while wearing his Speaker's robe. The CBC's Rafi Bujikanian joins me now. Uh, so Rafi, let's start with this report. There's a lot to go through on this story today. What were the findings from the PROC committee? Essentially, David, it's saying Greg Fergus was wrong, that he should apologize, which would be second apology because he already has apologized, and also that he should be made to pay a fine, but it's stopping short of asking him to step down. Have a listen to Government House Leader Karina Gold. The government has been quite clear that, uh, you know, this was a mistake that he made. Uh, however, you know, we do not feel that this is a resignable um, offence, but we will very carefully review PROC's recommendations um, and act in response. So the report is also saying the House of Commons should prepare a briefing binder which outlines clear rules for speakers in these kinds of cases. I should note that uh, perhaps to nobody's surprise, the Bloc Québécois and Conservative members of the right. committee are not in agreement with uh, with everyone else on it and saying he, he should still resign. Okay, and, and clearly uh, the Bloc and the Conservatives feel a, a binder, an apology and a fine is not enough. And Andrew Scheer, the Conservative House leader, he raised a new concern about Fergus today saying there is more evidence of the Speaker's partisanship. What did we hear from Scheer? Yeah, he rose up in the House this morning, about an hour after proceedings started, and uh, revealed an Instagram post from mid-November. So that's about six weeks after Fergus became Speaker. The post showed Fergus at a provincial liberal event for a Quebec member of the National Assembly. Uh, Scheer is arguing that that was out of bounds, too. We did speak to federal liberal MP Sophie Chateau tell about this. Uh, she said she was there as well and Fergus was just there attending a liberal cocktail. It was not a fundraising event. Right. We also obtained a statement from the Speaker's office. We're throwing it up on your screen now. It reads in part that uh, this the Speaker's attendance at, the, at this event precedes the introduction of a rigorous new protocol. Mr. Fergus was simply in attendance at this free event, which is in his writing. Okay, because uh, this has been the criticism uh, uh, about Fergus, that his partisanship hasn't stopped since he's become the Speaker. Uh, there was also some, uh, while Scheer was making revelations, uh, the CBC also had an exclusive story today from our reporter Elizabeth Thompson that reported that Scheer himself broke House rules earlier this year. Walk us through that. Yeah, so there was a provincial by-election in Ontario in the Oxford riding. Arpan Khanna was the Conservative candidate, and as our colleague Elizabeth Thompson revealed, um, Andrew Scheer appeared in a partisan video because he filmed the video um, campaigning for Khanna in his office. Now. She was fined $500 for this. That money actually ended up coming out of Arpan Khanna's campaign. The money was paid, right. but she did not pay for it. Um, Sheer's office has been asked about this, and he and the office simply pointed to the Board of Internal Economies meeting minutes about this, which revealed that the the fine had been issued and and had been. Paid. Uh, I should also say that at the same time, the NDP uh, came out with uh, some allegations of its own today, pointing to fundraising activities. It says she conducted, well, he was speaker in, under the previous Conservative government right. of. Uh, Prime Minister Stephen Harper, the NDP, of course, being the only party other than the Liberals who are saying uh, Fergus should not be made to step down over what's happened. Right. Okay. And just a small point. The Oscar by-election was a federal by-election. Arpan Khanna, now That's part right. of the caucus for sure. All right, Rafi, thank you so much. That's the CBC's Rafi Bujikanian. Now, Power and Politics reached out to both Speaker Greg Fergus and Conservative House Leader Andrew Scheer for an interview today, uh, but they were not available. Meanwhile, the Conservatives continued to demand that Fergus resign over what they call his blatant party. Partisanship. I think we've been clear. I think the speaker uh, should have resigned. He knew what he did was uh, was wrong, and he's lost confidence of most of the MPs in the House. Joining me now, NDP House Leader Peter Julian and Jean Denis Garon. He is the Bloc's national revenue critic. And I want to be clear: we did ask for a Conservative MP to join this panel, but no one uh, was made available. Uh, Mr. Garon, uh, welcome back to the show. Uh, you find yourself in the minority position, the Bloc and the Conservatives on this, because the NDP have decided that. 
an apology and a fine and some remediation is enough. Uh, can you live with that going forward? Well, first, I don't really like the expression minority position because when it comes to having confidence in the Speaker of the House of Commons, the Speaker should have the confidence of the House of Commons. Now he has lost the confidence of at least, at least 130 MPs because I personally know liberal MPs that don't have confidence in the leader, but uh, in the, the Speaker, but won't say it. So now, uh, what does that report say? First, the report of the committee uh, has been drafted by the NDP and by the Liberals, the Conservatives and the Bloc. We have dissident report. What it, what it, it first says that the punishment for being partisan and for lacking judgment would be to pay a few hundred dollars of fine for a speaker that makes almost a hundred hundred thousand dollars of salary premium for doing for, for for having the privilege of doing that job and. Uh, and uh, the second thing is that after more than a century and a half of rules and tradition in that house, they're going to say that they're going to have to draft a user's guide to the speaker for him to behave properly. But the bad news is that that won't replace his lack of judgment. Right. Mr. Fergus doesn't have judgment, and you can't buy judgment, and you can't draft that in any kind of user guide. So, so, Mr. Julian, uh, the New Democrats uh, obviously have sided with the Liberals on this and, and agreed that, that uh, Mr. Fergus c should stay. How do you uh, think I, that will work, <laughs> though? Like, I, 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 so I wouldn't say that. I mean, that what we have is Liberals saying nothing to see here. The, the Bloc, of course, doesn't respect Canadian institutions, uh, not even taking the time during the public hearing to ask questions of Mr. Fergus. They made speeches instead. And the Conservatives, of course, trying to, uh, trying to slag Mr. Fergus, but with things that Mr. Scheer has done already. As you pointed out, CBC reported the, the, the fact that there is uh, apparently a uh, fine that was paid by, by Mr. Scheer because he was using his office for partisan uh, a partisan taping of a video and, and that there is a transfer of money that apparently, according to CBC, could not uh, be, in, it could be in contravention of Election Canada rules. So what we have is the other parties not acting in the mature adult way that Canadians expect of them. Uh, the NDP has been. What we did was ask those tough questions during the hearing. He got the answers. Uh, we pushed for the fine, we pushed for remedial work because that is something that I think all of us understand is a problem. And we've also said uh, that if, if the Speaker ever does this kind of thing again, uh, that we will submit a motion of non-confidence. So we, right. I think, have done uh, the kind of disciplinary measures that are important in this thing, uh, not trying to burn the whole House of Commons down. This is how the NDP approaches things, is the adults in the room. Okay, I, I want to get to the, to the, to the sheer fine in, in just a second, but, but just on the question of Mr. Fergus, you've heard what Mr. Garon has to say. You've heard and seen what the Conservatives are saying about this. How does Parliament function with this many members of Parliament clearly in expressing a, a distaste in the Speaker? And do we really think a binder is going to be the solution? To, to this lack of confidence. Uh, a binder, uh, having the proper briefing around impartiality, I was surprised when the clerk testified that there's actually nothing that is told to the speaker when they start a new job. Now, you'll recall uh, with Speaker Rhoda, uh, it was the NDP that stepped forward. Uh, we were the only party that said, I I'm sorry, Mr. Rhoda, you've done a good job, but the, the fault of the, yeah. the tragedy around the Zelensky visit that meant that you have to step down. And the NDP was the only party that did that. No other party called for that. So we're, we're ones who believe in procedure, believe in basing and precedence. And in the case of the clerk not even having any information to give to a new speaker, a new speaker that takes their position halfway through Parliament, it seems to me that that is something that you do. Uh, having run social enterprises in the past, you have a protocol book, you have a briefing book, you make sure that new employees know everything that is expected of them. That didn't happen in this case. So, so Mr. Garan, it looks like um, you're not going to sit through Christmas, despite the filibuster uh, threats uh, earlier uh, this session, and that you will get a break, a reprieve from sort of the tension in the chamber. When you come back, though, and Mr. Fergus is there and presumably will have gotten the briefings uh, that, that Mr. Julian and others think could remedy some of this, how do you think it will function? Because uh, we've seen clearly the Conservatives have zero confidence in Mr. Fergus. Do you think Parliament can and be managed? 
and, and, and nor do we. And let's be clear, there is a Speaker of the House now, but there's no functional Speaker of the House. He has lost control of the House, and we can't work properly. And uh, uh, with regards to the briefing, we, ha we received in committee Mr. Zhang's, who is a clerk, who is an advisor to the, uh, the, um, the Speaker, and uh, he's been asked, uh, are, were you available to give advice to, uh, the, uh, to the speaker? And he said yes. And what would have been your advice if the speaker had asked? And Mr. Jean said, well, I would have told him not to do it. If you write a binder to <laughs> Mr. Fergus, he won't read it because he doesn't have enough judgment to read it because he didn't even seek advice. And for the third thing, I mean, you know, uh, some people said, including the NDP has been said a lot, including by Mr. Boulris, that uh, it's not a good time to elect a new uh, uh, Speaker of the House. It's not a good time. That's what they say. We have other things to do. So we have two things to say about that. The first, the, the, the first thing is that we've been talking about the Speaker of the House for two weeks instead of working on other things. And the real question is, if I may, if, if I That's may, not true. That's and, not true. and if I may, when's a good time for a speaker to become partisan and to lack judgment? February, is March, it? April, May, June, when is it? And the NDP didn't never so, answer so, that. So, I mean, this is why the bloc just wants chaos in the House of Commons. Oh, yeah. oh, what the yeah. NDP has achieved over the That's last two weeks is a dental you care see what partisanship plan. Is? We've you ensured as well affordable okay. housing for indigenous people. Order, please, one at a time. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's this what is, they do. This is what the, the speaker has yeah, to contend yeah, with, the bloc causing what they do. disorder. But the reality is the housing the consumer protection because of the food price gouging that so many Canadians are living through, I ensuring actually that we have anti-scab legislation in place. These are all measures that the NDP has been able to achieve over the last two weeks. So while the other parties have been trying to, to fight and create chaos, we've been making sure that things get done for people. Housing so, is important. So. Affordability and, and stopping food price gouging is important. Ensuring that people have access to health care, to dental care right. is important. Those are all things that Jagmeet Singh and the NDP have achieved. Okay. Uh, I and Mr. Grant, just a question on, on what Andrew Scheer raised today. Uh, I, I accept, we start from the premise, the bloc has no confidence in Mr. Fergus because of the video, full stop. Yeah. This earlier event that Mr. Scheer raised, in, in isolation from the video, is going to a cocktail party like that disqualifying for a Speaker of the House? Because you're still politicians who need to get elected, you know, MPs are whoever gets in that job. Is it okay for them to go to something like this? Mr. Scheer did it when he was Speaker, had a cabinet minister come to a fundraiser in his riding. What's the bar here? Well, the, the, the principle in general is that the Speaker of the House can go to a partisan event in his, lo, in his own riding right. uh, for his own party at the federal level, level, which hasn't been done. The problem with Mr. Fergus is that he came to committee and uh, he had an opportunity to tell the committee that he had attended that event and he didn't do it. He, right. uh, it was a time when he apologized. He, could, uh, he, should, he, he should have just open the book. So the real question is, how can we trust what this guy says starting from now? Start, is this, there's no way we can do that. So what we believe now is that we've seen the tip of the iceberg, and day after day we just realized that the iceberg might be very, very much deeper than what we expected. So, so uh, David, it's quickly. important to note the Bloc didn't ask questions of the speakers. So we did. They, no, they, they made speeches, and I was there sitting beside the, the Bloc representative. I think the we've important thing is here, rather us. than being, uh, being adults in the room means assuring that the that the institution is preserved and that we're not dealing with chaos every few weeks. That's certainly what Mr. Polyev wants. Uh, the Conservatives tried to block 120 areas of spending last week. We, we were, voted for 30 hours. He showed up for an hour and then left. And then they tried to cut affordable housing, national defense, uh, uh, food, food safety, no, no. all these things. So the Conservative brand is chaos. Uh, the NDP brand is making sure things are done for people, and we're very proud of the last two weeks but getting all the, these things the, accomplished for Canadians. What the NDP tells us is that there's a good time in the year for a speaker to become partisan and to lack judgment. For them, there's a good time of the year for that, and they have to tell us when, <laughs> when is that good time of the year. Okay, well, right. we'll, we'll see if we can figure that out. But, but Mr. Julian, I, I do want to circle back to what you raised about Mr. Scheer and this report. Now, Mr. Scheer uh, was uh, fined, we're told, by the Board of Internal Economy, on which you sit, uh, $500 for improper filming of a partisan video in his office to support a conservative candidate in a federal by-election. Now, this is different than the Mr. Fergus issue because it was the Speaker's robes in the Speaker's chambers, and that's aside. The issue I wanted to ask you about is that Mr. Shear didn't pay this fine out of pocket. The candidate he was helping 
reached into their campaign funds and used that to pay the fine. Do you feel that's appropriate, that a fine meted out for improper political activity is then paid out of the campaign funds of the politician who is being helped improperly? Well, and, and that, that's why, I mean, CBC does very, very good work in journalism. I, I have read the, the article. The article talks about that, that concern, that this money uh, apparently, according to the article, was, was paid out of the campaign's election fund. That um, would not be in keeping of my understanding of the Canada Elections Act, which means uh, that you have the Conservative candidate violating Canada Elections Act. Now, it's too soon to actually submit that return, yeah, uh, I think, audited. for auditing. But yeah. the reality is if that, that's a serious violation. And we've seen Conservatives before violate electoral laws. We remember Dean Del Mastro, who served time in prison. We've had a number of Conservative MPs that have, have been sanctioned by Elections Canada. Elections Canada is not something that, that you can just make up rules around. And my concern is that that may, if the reports are true, that may have violated the Canada Elections Act. That has serious repercussions, uh, both for Mr. Canna and potentially for Mr. Scheer. Mr. Garon, la do, last word to you. Do you have any thoughts on, on this particular issue on whether it's appropriate for campaign donations to be used to pay a fine imposed by the House of Commons? I think there's a good lesson for all parliamentarians in all parliaments with that is that we should respect the rules because when we don't respect the rule, when one of us doesn't respect the rules, it erodes the public's confidence in democracy. And I'm sure my colleague will agree with me, uh, agree with me on that. And we have to be mindful of that. Now, there's a major difference between what Mr. Scheer did and what Mr. Fergus did, is, which is that Mr. Fergus is violating the law. Mr. Fergus Mr. is, if I may, if I may, if I may, Mr. Fergus is the Speaker of the House. We don't ask him to resign as an MP. We're just right. telling him st to step down and continue doing what he was doing before he was a Speaker of the House, which right. is uh, twisting arms and doing partisan work. Okay, and I should point out uh, that Prime Minister Trudeau was also fined $500 for shooting a video like this. But as far as we know at this point, they paid it back either out of his pocket properly yet, as opposed to... Uh, using uh, election donations. Uh, gentlemen, I want to thank you both. Jean-Denis Garant and Peter Julian. Now, we did ask a Conservative MP to speak with us today, but no one was made available for this. They didn't want to show up. They didn't want to defend their position. All right. Well, <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you both for, for being here.